Hi, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this quick tip tutorial is going to cover how to set variables, which is one of several gameplay related types of data you can edit right within Spryder and synchronize with specifically what's happening in any particular animation. In this example, we have a robot that displays one letter at a time, and then within this one cycling animation, it switches from one letter to the next and then back. All right, and let's imagine that we have a game design where there are several of these robots on screen that are switching letters periodically with this looping animation. And when the player clicks on any particular robot, whichever letter is being displayed, we want to populate into a text string on the screen. If you could imagine trying to program this uh, based on the timing of the animation, you'd have to painstakingly check the actual uh, moments in time that each particular letter is on display and then hard code something like if this animation is playing and this animation is within a range of time and the player clicks on a variable then make the, uh, the, the letter that would appear in the text string uh, correspond to the letter that's being displayed and uh, as you can imagine that would not only be tedious but then if you wanted to go back and edit the timing of an an this animation or which letter displayed in which order, you'd have to suddenly re-get your numbers and re-hard code all of that. Luckily with Spryder, there's a very elegant solution to this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is simply left click and drag right here to expand the timeline upward so that we can see the uh, timelines for each specific object. And if you do this, for any particular animation, and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see a section called metadata. And this is its own timeline specifically for things such as variables. So in this case, what we're going to want to create is a variable. And in order to do that, all I'm going to do, I'm going to start right at the beginning of the timeline, and I'm just going to double click here um, in the timeline for metadata, and that's going to bring up this edit metadata um, panel here and then I'm going to enter a name and uh, I'll call it uh, current letter oops I've got an extra T there and I'm going to create a new variable and it's going to give it that name and um, I can choose for my variable to be either a float which is a number with decimal point integer, which is a whole number, or string. In this case, we want a string. And the default value, I can either leave blank, or in this case, we're going to assume that the robot starts by displaying the letter A. So we're going to give that a letter A and click Create Variable. And now you'll see current letter is here. Its default value is A. It is a string. And if I click on it, I have a checkbox now called Active in Key. And if I click that, you'll see that uh, keyframe appears uh, under metadata and specifically for the variable called current letter. So now I can close this dialog. You'll see I have my keyframe for metadata and specifically the current letter variable. And now I'm just going to scroll along the timeline to find that exact moment when the letter switches from A to B right here and I'm going to double click either on the metadata timeline or the current letter variable timeline and that'll bring up uh, this uh, dialog again I can just select current letter choose active and key which will give it a keyframe at that moment in the timeline uh, and then I can double click here in the current value box and choose B and then close that so now I have my keyframe for the metadata which is going to change the variable called current letter from A to B and then I just need to finish off by finding the last spot where it changes back to the letter A in this case right here and double click choose active and key for current letter double click on current value and change it back to A so now let's imagine again our code in our game engine. Instead of painstakingly looking for time durations within an animation's timeline that 
happen to coincide with a specific letter, now we can simply have code that says something like this. Uh, when the player clicks on any given robot sprite, then populate the text string one time with whatever the current va value of the current letter variable happens to be. So you would simply, you wouldn't have any hard-coded uh, time durations related to specific letters. Uh, it would be very clean and straightforward um, and there would be no need to edit or change your code if you drastically change your animation. You could have it display a completely different sequence of letters with completely different timing and it wouldn't matter, you wouldn't have to change your code at all. So now I've switched over for this next example to the platformer pack and specifically the punch animation for this character and I've added a collision rectangle that I called attack box and you'll see when I find the uh, attack box in the timeline so I, in other words I find its specific timeline I can click that little plus and find its own metadata so now I can just scroll to where the collision box appears I can double click there and then we're going to create a new variable. I can either name it now or name it after clicking create new variable. And I'm going to call this attack damage. Uh, we'll leave that as a float for the sort of optimal uh, resolution of the uh, variable when it tweens. And I will click the create variable. I'll then make it active in key. And then I will set its current value, we'll say to 5. So that's the damage it would do to an enemy if uh, it collided with the, an enemy. And I'll close that. So now you'll see under attack box, under its metadata, there's a variable called attack damage. And we set it to five. So now I can scroll through here. And right here is really the sort of zenith of the punch when it would be its most effective. And it only exists there for a very brief moment in time. Uh, so I'm going to double click here again on attack damages timeline and uh, we're going to make it active in key and I'm going to change its current value to 10 so we'll say at its zenith it does twice as much damage as during sort of the beginning of the part of the punch that would have some amount of effect on something uh, so we'll make that 10 and close it and now I'm just going to go back here and you'll see the punch finishes which makes sense if I wanted to I could even go here and say okay at this point it should still have an effect but we're going to bring it back down to half the damage or something like that and I would just go here click attack damage activate and key our active and key and set its current value to five again so as you can see you can have an incredible amount of control for specific values related to specific things in a very uh, sort of organic and visual way. And again, the great thing about this is it's timed perfectly visually with the actual animation. So you could drastically change the animation at any point or decide to change those values at any point based on what's happening in your given uh, animation. And you don't have to go back and change some hard-coded numbers or uh, time related uh, number sequences in your game code. You can just edit it in a nice visual, natural way in Sprayer itself. Thanks a lot for watching.